Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Ross Patterson Revolution! Brought to you by BlackRifleCoffee.com Maybe it's Bezel in the whole thing Maybe it's Bezel in the whole thing The old ways die Is that what it is? Yeah It is, okay <laughs> It is what it is. Good. I just was wondering if it was a different. I watch a uh, special on B Coops, you know, for sound editing and uh, how that whole shit shakes out. Right. I'm not going to say that we got the Oscars uh, back on stage, the Oscar nominees back on stage. I feel um, like we did. Yeah. I feel like we did. Yeah. But people were making videos and I saw the B Coops one, Bradley Cooper's for A Star is Born, mm-hmm. how they're working on it. And it's um, easy. Yeah. It's easy as busy. They're back. They get to go on stage. I thought that was a nice thing. Bradley Cooper's was, a gentleman. That was obviously going to happen, right? I don't, I don't think it was. If people didn't bitch, because, I mean, they specifically released a statement saying if it wasn't for the backlash. Right. You know, that they wouldn't have been on stage, so. I think they're also saying, like, okay, will you watch now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you know what I, I mean? Don't. They're like, you weren't watching anyway. There's no host this year. You weren't going to watch. The ratings are shit. <laughs> now you want... best little hole Maybe if I can bring the old way down. Yeah. I couldn't... Yeah. I still couldn't understand that song. But I love it. Right. I love it. Right. Man, I, f- I, f- I feel like... Like Bradley Cooper's character could be my character in the podcast world someday. You know? Yeah. Maybe you'll it's get just, to a place oh, where... You know? You can't hear... Yeah. Too much podcasting, right? Can't do it. Can't, can't do anything. Here you've got a ringing. Yeah. An inner pain. Yep. Refuse to wear the, the these guys anymore. Yep. You know, it's just like, ah, yep. I need to be the, the people. Right. People who people, you know? People people. Just start totally can't, saying incoherent shit. Can't understand you. Maybe that's the right. that's my path in this life, you know? Sure. I don't know. It's a. I'm in a weird mood today, James. Yeah, it's President's Day. Oh, so it's a that very, must be it. Very reflective day for me, as you know. Sure. As you, it's my goddamn well known. It's your Columbus Day. It is. It is. I'm a big, big, big President's Day fan. This is your Oscars. This is it? This is it? We're recording this on Monday. It's going to air tomorrow night. Amazon Prime. So we want to thank first and foremost for recognizing my brilliance. Obviously, one of my masterpieces is FDR American Badass. They're showing it for free on Prime. Stop. For the uh, for for President's Day, and they but they did set like a timer on it. It says it it stops like March first or something. Oh, so eh, it's, hey. a, it's a nice two week thing for President's Day. That's plenty of time. That's what I say. That's what I say. So I I posted it and I was pretty stoked about it. I was also thinking though that like I'm probably one of Maybe 10 people has made a presidential film. Oh, so it's like <laughs> what they do. Have I feel that choose. honored or do mm-hmm. I not? Yeah, it's, it's, you know, what FDR American Badass, Lincoln, Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter, JFK. Sure. K- Costner, me and Costner sharing the same day. Yeah. You know, that's a nice thing. Um, but that's about, that's all the really the president's movies I can name, I think. Yeah, that are about a president. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vice. That's not about no, a president. It's not about a president. Oh, Bush. W. W's yeah, got one. W. Yeah, with uh, Brolin. Brolin beater. My, my man. My man. God, I remember there was a, a cousin of mine who was trying to make a Taft film happen. Uh, yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Is he the fattest one? I, th- I think he was, yes. And, I think um, I've heard that. Or maybe, maybe it was either Taft or Garfield, whichever one was from Ohio. Taft. Oh, it was Taft. between those two. Okay. So uh, you, we have a computer set up, but. I don't. <laughs> this is just to cover my bosom. If you're watching and the video show on YouTube right now. Stomach. Um, <laughs> and I do. Jesse appreci- has a computer in front of her every show. I'd rather just talk to the people. Listen, so you can you can look it up. I'll talk to them. I want to thank you for all your messages. 
about me wasting away. And don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Everything's going to be okay. I'm fine. I know I look scary thin. <laughs> scary thin. Um, no, I am in hiding. So, you know. Yeah. I'm, I have all these things hiding. I'm not really posting a lot. So I'm in hiding. It was Taft, by the way. I just looked it up. Yeah, no. It was Taft. That's what I said. So hard movie to make. I don't remember. Like Taft isn't the guy where you're like. Who would play him? Oof. Looking at him now. I don't know. You'd have to put on maybe a, hun- a hondo. I'm back on uh, Goodman, maybe. I don't like this. Is a, this is a tough one. Mm-hmm. He's a he was. A large man, a very large man. But you know, I, look, his his presidential term ran through 1913. Shit didn't really start popping off until Woodrow Wilson was in there. You know, like that's that's kind of the. Pre- it's weird. I you look you look back at these presidents. You're like, ah. I, some of them I know, some of them I don't. Like if you like Aaron Burr, I don't remember anything about Burr. Right. Taft, right. Garfield, I know nothing about. There's others where you're like, fuck yeah, dude. You know, Lincoln, obviously. Sure. Uh, another, dude, another friend of mine, and I don't know if this is going to happen or not. He is trying to make a George Washington film happen. He has for years, and it's, it was like a $120 million budget. And I believe, I believe somebody is actually making it, but I don't think it's him. I think somebody else beat him to it. But it's super graphic, I guess. Like in what way? Well, I mean, you know, he was fucking people up, war and shit like oh, that. Okay. He was the so first president. Oh, okay, so not like sexual. No, no. <laughs> Did you, were you so expecting a sexual presidential movie? Look, if there's one thing I know about movies in history, movies about history, right. real historical events, right, 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 is right, that right. you find out some weird sexual stuff about them. I, I guess, yeah. You know? yeah. A lot of the times it's some weird sex stuff. <laughs> My, no? I, I forgot after looking up George Washington here, I forgot Barry Boswick won a Golden Globe for playing George Washington in a TV movie. Oh. Yeah. He's the best. So he played uh, FDR and, and George Washington. He played two He's presidents. He's go to. Yeah. Go to white haired president guy. Guy. Mm hmm. Yeah. I believe he was a. I believe he was also a president in like. Fucking, no, he was a mayor, Spin City. Yeah, he looks very political. You're right. Right. He's got a. Poli- he carries himself very. Oh yes. Very politically. He's a striking, tall. You know what I mean? Yeah. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You Love know what's him. weird though, and this is this is a true story about Presidents Day. Um, I always, I, I never enjoyed writing growing up. I hated it, probably because I was always. I talked to somebody about, else about this, and, I, and it was probably because I always was writing about stuff that I didn't want to write about. So whenever you're forced to write something, you're kind of just like, eh, I don't want to write this, you know? Sure. I don't want to write about fucking Genghis Khan or whatever it was. Like, mm-hmm. uh, I, I don't want to do it. Right. Then, I, I think it was junior or senior year, I had to write a paper actually on Abraham Lincoln, and I got super into history, and I enjoyed writing that. And that was one of the very first things that I enjoyed writing. And I think that carried over into my, my life. I enjoy writing about historical figures. Um, hence FDR, American yeah. Badass. Uh, Lincoln is in this, this book. Mm-hmm. Um, all of these, there's a lot of famous people like, from yeah. history in all these books. So I think, I think part of that actually did carry over, Jabes. Yeah. Weird, huh? Yeah, maybe President, I mean, President's Day really is <laughs> your day. It's not a joke. I wonder what Trump's doing today. Party in. 45. Yeah. Is it, do they call him 45 as like an insult or do people like, no, because they don't want to say his name or something? No, this started a few years ago where where people were going by uh, names. Numbers. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Numbers. And I I even use, again, I hate to go back to When Darkness Falls Doesn't Catch It. You did. Yeah. I use use one of those references in that about a president uh, that, that, that this one guy didn't like. It's been going on for, I think since George Bush, George Bush was the one that was like, all right, the first one. Okay. He was going by numbers and he said, I think he did an interview or something that said all presidents call each other by numbers. And you're like, oh, all right, well, that's fucking cool. You know? It is cool. What a cool little group to be in. Yeah. Now I'll never be in that group. No. No. 
Mm-mm. Not in one million years. No. <laughs> That's okay. Look That's the, okay. The way it's setting up, probably be 45 for five more years. <laughs> five more years. It was shocking watching that. We were watching the circus last night. Yes. Oof. Gosh, they do not give a shit. Even anymore. though it is presidency, we're not we're not going political just just to do it. This is no. ge- genuinely shit we were watching and talking about. The circus has gone super left now. They were trying, like I said, they were trying to hide it a little bit yeah. in the in the earlier seasons, and now it's just after after the Hillary loss which they yes. they just all could not <laughs> contain it where they were just like you never know fuck this right right yeah. you never know what can happen you know they're just analysts they're just telling you both sides and then once she lost it was like they all were like oh my god how could this happen and you're you like you finally got to see people's um, true colors on the yes. show and you were like whoa bipartisan whoa, whoa, whoa. analysts people that yeah. just give you the facts they have no agenda. So for people who don't, don't know what we're talking about at home, The Circus is a political show on Showtime that was following the entire 2016 election. Yes. And they, the way they had it was it was essentially two, two hosts and a third, it was a third guy. An uh, analyst. So it was like two yeah. reporter type guys. And they were and traveling the around yeah. uh, the country with the candidates and they had unprecedented access to oh, it was crazy. everything that was going I- on. Really like watching it. Was it was amazing. And it was critically lauded. And I, I have never seen the ins and outs of a campaign like that before. And then, uh, ironically enough, as, as it was going on, we got invited to uh, you know, a few of the rallies. And we yeah. went. So it, it made us feel like, oh, shit, we know what's going on. Because so we, you know, we asked our friend who mm-hmm. had... Who we can't say. Our but consigliere who took us around in the green liaison. rooms and all that. Yeah. Whatever. Um, um, yeah. And you see the cameras. Yeah. You and see you're the like, cameras oh, for the circus. Okay. And you're like, yeah, oh, yeah. right there. They really are here. Yeah. And so I, I, what I enjoyed about it was it was nonpartisan. You didn't know. They were just kind of telling you, hey, here's what's going on. Blah, blah, blah. Their whole thing was like, this is crazy. It's a circus. Wh- whoever side you're on. Politics. This is insane. Yeah, this politics. particular campaign. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, With Donald I, I think, Trump and Hillary, I mean, I think because it started crazy. before Trump won the primaries, so right. But he was running. And he was running, was, but but I'll I'll say this: every year, there's there's going to be somebody who runs that you're just like, ah, come on, man. Right. Like I, I think this year it's probably you know Howard Schultz, maybe I guess you would say. Okay. Yeah. As yeah. far as a political outsider who has no experience in politics. Yes, you know, he's yes. just a businessman. That's like, what I was saying. Yeah. He is the anti-Trump. Basically. Exactly. Well, so, sort of. I mean, both of them were businessmen. And then they are now getting into politics and things like that. So eh, I think that's the guy this year. And if, if he ends up staying as an independent, that's really going to disrupt the election. And then there's going to be a great storyline for their show if we continue to watch it. I, we watched that episode last night. Yeah. Uh, you've been watching this season. And I'm like, my God, man. They don't, not only do they not hide it, but like the camera angles are changed for, for democratic candidates and all that shit. And they're, you're trying to make crowds larger than they seem and everything else. You know, I know all these camera tricks, like when you're shooting extras, it is extremely expensive to get extras in a movie Yeah, uh, because you have to feed them. You have to put wardrobe on them and you have to house them essentially. So you have to either get tents, chairs, uh, all that shit. Like, it's super expensive, like, extras. Whenever I watch one of these big-budget movies with a shit ton of extras, I'm like, oh, my God. That must have been a nightmare. Right. And, like, when I saw the, the, the Queen, the Freddie Mercury movie. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, all the, the Live Aid people were green screen. I was like, I get it. You didn't want to well, feed those motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, shit. So, w- with that being said, as we're watching the circus, like, I know these camera tricks they're using. I, I remember when Hillary was running, and I, I during the rallies, I, I saw, uh, like, a few of those crowds that were green screened in, and I was like, why is nobody not noticing this? It's the same people that are just recycling them up and down the screen screen. We were the only ones to talk about it, and I think I, I brought it up on Drinking Bros and maybe here i don't know if we, yeah, we, we did. Had, i don't know if we'd started this show yet had we yeah what we had okay yeah yeah when we were talking about hillary green yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah so yeah, yeah, yeah. um when i saw the thing with you know uh they were following what beto is i thought it was beto the whole time it's beto huh i guess it's beto i wonder if they're making it beto because you hear the um like 
Mexican people shooting, ch- shouting it. Yeah. And it's Beto. Beto, right? Yeah. 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 My Here's my thing. I think the it was the nurse, right? The nanny. His nanny that called him Beto. Yeah. So I think he was calling him Pito. Sure. Which means like little penis. That's like what you call little. A little, little baby. Pito. Yeah, a little baby. Little Pito con el chillito, pero no tiene champagne. Yeah. And then they And then he, I he think it, it kind of morphed into Beto. And then now he wants to be more uh, taken more seriously. So now it's Beto. Oh, boy. But again, I saw the, you know, these Mexican ladies in the front. They're like, Beto, Beto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. That's, what I, that's what I saw too. So I'm confused by him. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like the look of him. I don't like that he doesn't have a, he has a, you know, a weak jaw. Right. He has a weak jaw. It goes in. Well, there's, there's currently out. 16 candidates. And I don't like the look of him. I, I don't, it, that's going to be uh, uh, whatever. I, the, the fun part about the circus now, right? Yes. Which, because I, I, when I watched it, I was pissed that they had gone all left and like dropped the nonpartisan yeah. shit. But I was just like, man, I just, I just wanted to enjoy this show from both sides. I think the interesting part about this versus 2016 is you, ha- you now have the exact opposite, right? So there was what, 18 Republicans running yeah. back then? Yeah. So and then it, then it narrowed down to Trump. Mm-hmm. I don't know anybody running against Trump now. I don't think they have on a the guy. On the Republican side no. no, and I don't, I don't, I don't think anybody's going to pop up, and it's, it's going to be a steamroll. So from a news standpoint, to make that series interesting, you can't really go anti-Trump because the primaries start in June. Yeah. Which when they said that, I was like, oh, no, that's right. Like, I think we said it on this show, but it just it really didn't kick in that we're – Heading towards the end of February right now. Oh, yeah. We're only about four months away from the first primary where you're just like, Crazy. holy shit. So with that, if they're, if they're going to continue to have a show, which obviously they are, I'm, I'm assuming the ratings still do well without the other guy. Because the other guy got me too, and he got bounced this year, so it's a chick. I don't think it was like because of him that the show was doing well. But um, yeah, you know, what's weird now is that they don't have as much access to the Republican side. So... Trump doesn't seem to be talking to them anymore. No. Well, because he doesn't have to. He's president. He doesn't have to, but at the same time, I don't think he will. So even like no. they'll try and talk to Republican like senators and stuff, and they sure. won't talk to him because they're no. like, fuck you guys, yeah. dude. Like, we know what you're doing on the show, and you're spinning it and making us seem like fucking idiots. So th- now they're going to go after each other in these primaries, and then that, that show, I guess, is, is just going to have to follow these guys and these that destruction and carnage on that side because i mean dude that's it's gonna be relentless and i i'm curious now after watching that because i you know we got to see some of that beto rally i'm not gonna call him beto i'm i'm calling this motherfucker beto because i don't give a shit right i just don't give a shit about that guy or that mm-hmm. whole stupid fucking story uh, legally changing your name from robert to to beto like right. get fucked on that man um I'm I'm curious is to see how they're going to spin this with, you know, because they're, they're already leaning with Kamala Harris on one side. And, you know, the entire party is kind of like we're running on this. We hate white, rich male privilege. And that's Beto. Like, you're not going to get any more male privilege than that, than a guy and named after his Mexican And this is how you know nanny. that they are not um, giving you the facts or not talking straight because they're like i think like kamala has a chance and this person has a chance and you're like don't fucking all of them at that at that table last me. night said it's no bullshit. matter who runs is is definitely 100 percent going to win from the democratic side and i'm like man it's kind of the same thing you said last time mm. and uh yeah. i think whew. she's got a chance the dark horse yeah no no that lady in the fucking snow <laughs> That's not happening. Kohlbacher, Klobacher, whatever her name is. Whatever it is. <laughs> it's another Hillary. She's got, she's all but me too herself. Yeah. She's got all these fucking stories of people that work for her that she's a fucking nightmare tyrant. <laughs> throws shit at her employees. Ah, I like that, you know. Listen, I'm, I'm fine I'm with kidding. it, kidding. but apparently we don't, we don't want our women presidents to be bitches, but we want them to somehow climb to the top. Yeah. And be... <laughs> president so again i think again we are we're still not ready for what what a woman president is going to look like which 
it's going to be a bitch. And if you guys aren't ready for that, it's not going to happen. My, my, I tell you, nice girls. And I'll tell you this right now, because I am as nice as they come, huh? Yeah. They don't get ahead. They don't <laughs> run companies. Do you know what I'm saying? They just don't. Yeah. My money is on uh, Nikki Haley. If it's going to be a female eventually. That's it. But yeah, uh, we'll see. Either way, happy President's Day out there. I hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're partying wherever you are. Really getting in, digging in. You know, it's a weird one because school's, school's in, but I believe post offices and federal Is this new? things are closed. I don't know, James. I don't remember anything. I feel like President's Day we have off. Am I, I-, I felt like I went to school and, you know, we made the, the, the paper cutouts of Washington's hat and wore those as kids. That's what okay. I feel like, but I don't know. Okay. I, I could be wrong. We'll see. Uh, either way, we got some sponsors, Jabes, who pay for this whole fucking shit to be on the air. BlackRifleCoffee.com. Come and itch. They did sell out of those fucking whoobies. Those whoobie hoodies, by the way. Yeah, of course. I told you. Of course. I told you. Sign up for the Coffee Club of the Month program. That email once a month is gold. That is the only company that it is actually gold from where you're like, holy shit. These are new, awesome products that I've got to have. And then again, you can use your promo code on all of them. Uh, Or if you just enjoy getting delicious coffee sent to your house on the same date of every month, go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. They get K-Cups, bags. It's about $4 cheaper than Costco. So you're saving your sea legs from walking in inside of a giant Costco. You know what I'm saying? Just have it shipped to your house. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use the promo code REVOLUTION for 20% off. Next up, we've got GhostBed.com forward slash Drinking Bros. What? Yeah, Jabes. You know, you know what a, a good ghost, ghost bed is for? What? A nice presidential screw. Oh, is that a thing? Yeah, a nice little presidential screw. Have I wonder fun. if uh, Bill Clinton's got one. And he was probably the biggest poon hound, right, President? Yeah. Oh, yeah. without a doubt. I wonder if I wonder if he's still still banging on a on a ghost bed right now. You know? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. No, I don't think he's banging. Him and Gina Gershon. President Clinton it was always the rumor. It was, it was uh, Gina Gershon. He was tagging. That motherfucker could not help himself. That is a definition. Hey. Of a poon. How? If you I were mean, married to her, it would be the same. Like, I, I get it 100%. He was being investigated for rape and was giving gifts to... The, the ladies, yeah. He didn't, he didn't give a fuck. The guy did not give a fuck. To what's her name? Lewinsk. Uh, Lewinsk. And then you had the Juanita Broderick thing, and that still never really got resolved. Gosh. Yeah. He ju- I'm saying he just could not help himself. No, Poonhounds. Profesh. A profesh? An old school. That's yeah. how. That's how it was. Yeah, that's how it was back in the day. You were like a for real dog. Yeah, that couldn't. I'd like. They should put a ghost bed up in the in the Lincoln bedroom. There's a mattress in there. People sleep in there. Yeah. So why not throw a ghost bed in there? People do screw in there, right? <laughs> when you, they go to like yeah, everybody parties fucks in the stuff. in the Lincoln bedroom. Yeah. That's the thing. That's the thing. Every right? celebrity says that of like, hey, yeah. when I stayed there. I've, you got to bang in the, got in the to. Lincoln bedroom. You got to. Yeah. I like it. I like it. If we were there, we'd bang in there. We'd have to. Yeah. 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 Not each other. No. But. No. Just separate. Just for the separate. night. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Whoever's in there. Yeah, why not? Why not? Who's ever's, who's ever's in there? It could be uh, Steve Buscemi. Fuck it. Let's, oh. let's get him in the mix, you know? Welcome. We got to do it. We got to do it, Steve. Either I'm on top or you are, bud. Listen, <laughs> you gonna let the old way, way down. down. Man, man, old way. Old way. man ah. this, this dirty old podcast is gonna lay his dick somewhere. Yeah. Might as well be on a ghost bed. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. They have a, they have a presidential de- deal going on. And also it's an extra 15% off. If you're a military or a first responder, yeah. Yeah. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. Get on that shit. 
Next up, we got StrikeForceEnergy.com. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Shabloinker. Boom, boom, boom. Let's go back to your room. Boom, and boom, we can boom, do boom, it all boom, night. Boom, and you boom, can make boom, it feel right. Boom, 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 a lot of guys, I got a lot of thank yous um, from uh, recommending StrikeForce on the diet sitch. Yes, no carbs, no sugars. So it's good for all your diets. And that crash in the afternoon, everybody's like, yo, I appreciate the heads up. I didn't know. StrikeForce doesn't have as much, you know, fucking Joyce around the world is like a monster or Red Bull or shit like that. You know, I was watching NASCAR yesterday, the the uh, Daytona 500, and you see like, ah, presenting you by monster and all that shit. Those guys have billions to spend on marketing. But truthfully, Strike Force is a better product. Um, so I know it's in like a thousand 7-Elevens. If, if it's not near you, go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Try this shit now. Um, tell me if I'm not correct. Everybody, I, I've, I've won this challenge every single time. 10-pack, 40-pack, 750-milliliter bottle. They also have a subscription. Go to StrikeForceEnergy.com. Try it right now. Let me know what you think. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. I think a 10-pack would be like 8 bucks. then. Let me know what you think about it, for reals. Uh, last but not least, StraightRazors.com. You know who didn't use one? Lincoln. <laughs> On that beard of his, that old chin strap beard. Ooh. <laughs> That's a clean cut, smooth. You rock it! Oof, boy. He dug deep for that one, Javes. Yeah. Yeah, he dug real deep for that one. Don't tell me when to do it. I, th- you're, when it goes Don't too long. Don't tell me when to do it. When it goes too long, Javes, somebody's got to step in. Tired of this shit. Somebody's got to step in. You were, you were going, uh, that was at least 12 seconds right there. It's a 12 second pause. Like you were off in the distance, like sea captain style. Looking for that sunset. Looking for that. Where's that sun going to rise? Where am I going to take this boat? Where am I going to take this ship? Uh, if you're a dude in this life, a real captain, <laughs> you're looking to shave. Go to straightrazors.com. They got everything there. They got raised straight razors. Uh, they got shampoos, conditioners, beard oils, mustache waxes. Everything you need to be a real man in this life, they got you covered. Straightrazors.com. Promo code REVOLUTION, 20% off. It's smolder, that aftershave is my jam, so is her cologne. And as always, you can purchase my books, When Darkness Falls, He Doesn't Catch It, and Night She Cries While He Rides His Steed. When Darkness Falls, He Doesn't Catch It, it's the highest rated book on Audible. Of course it is. Still, still undefeated. President, President Lincoln's in this one, so we'll keep with the presidential theme. We'll keep it going, Javes. Um, I, I want to, I want to bring to light today, James. This is the one year anniversary of Fergie, Fergie, uh, at the all-star game, the oh, worst that. national anthem of all time was one year ago. It seems so much longer. Yeah. Doesn't it? Um, no, it doesn't seem that long ago. Really? Mm-hmm. I think for me personally, because the news cycles are happening faster and faster. We have so much access to news and technology that these stories that seem like this, that seems like five years ago to me. I would have said three, three to five years ago. Oh. That's how long it feels to me where I'm just like, oh man, so all this shit's going on. It's coming at you so fast. Like the, the, you know, the Jesse Smollett thing, which we called, by the way. We were one of the, the very first pe- shows to be like, this is fucking bullshit. We touched it, basically. We touched it. Yeah. That's the beauty of, and, of podcasts. Um, with that, like it, that, that story is changing every single hour as it still goes on right now. Oh, Jesse. But again, you get caught up in a story like that for days right. or like a week or whatever right. it is. Um, fuck, remember when Claim was going through that lethal weapon shit? Like it seems oh forever and never that ending. That one did seem like it went on forever. Jesus Christ. And then, you know, there's uh, like the this stupid, this Russia thing and all just all this seems never ending and you're like, oh man, I, I'm starting to forget things that happen where I'm like, oh fuck, was that only, man, it was only a year ago. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like all those people dying in like 2016 when it was like Prince and Bowie and all those guys, it was like, Shit. man, was that only just a couple of years ago? It feels a long time ago. That does seem like a long time ago. Yeah. Strange. Strange. And I was talking to a good friend of mine last night, uh, super late. Um, Mr. Mr. Darren Garcia is one of my, one of my beef fries in this life. And, uh, we were talking about stories, the stones, Rolling Stones are going on tour, uh, beginning in a- April. And I was, we were talking about going to a show this year in Chicago. And 
I remember, you know, when this thing got announced, that tour got announced, you know, two or three months ago, I was like, oh, fuck. That's coming up in like six weeks they start. Holy shit. That's crazy to me. Yeah, we're trying to go, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, yeah we, I want to go to the Chicago one. Be careful in Chicago. Why? Just around the subways or like, Oh, I that's don't, right. It's MAGA country. It's a MAGA country yeah, and yeah, like yeah, yeah. you are not safe. Sure, sure. Definitely not an. Uh, I, I'm gonna. I, there's a couple guys I'm gonna hire. These not Nigerian bodybuilders that I know that that Gosh, have come highly recommended. I during that is just like, ah, uh, like I am. I must be so tired, just tired in life right now. <laughs> that even the thought of like doing all of that, right. where like he had to call them and they had to like meet him and beat him up and yeah the whole thing like it just seems so so exhaust like even just the cold yeah 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 yeah, yeah. waiting in the cold for him yeah oh it, ju- it yeah just Cra- crazy. things seem so again you get caught up in this shit and you're like all right cool uh the reason why i bring up my, my friend too is like you know when you've been he's been one of my best friends for 20 years right you know you've been best friends with somebody so long and you I haven't talked to him in a few months, right? Um, life happens, obviously. He's got kids, kids the same age, actually, as we do. Yeah. Life happens around you. You forget to call people, blah, blah, blah. And then you pick up the phone and talk to them like, like nothing's happened. Like he's totally. one of those friends. Totally. You know, where it's just like, he's, all right, cool. Totally. But even then, I was like, man, I, when I hung up the phone, I was like, when's the last time I talked to him? And it was, you know, six months ago, three months, like, shit. Uh, time to me is going faster and faster and faster with all of, with all of the information we have at our, at our, at our tips, at sure. our digits right now, sure. things, are, things are really starting to fly by where you're just like, all right, cool. Even relationships and you know, with friends and family yeah. and things like that where you're like, oh, fuck, yeah, that happened, huh? Yeah, I mean, even, so Easter's coming up. That's yeah. when I was like first started hanging out with the friends, kind of girl friends that I have now. Right. Mom friends. Right. So it's like, dude, it's going to be a fucking year. It's going to be yeah. a year since I've known you. I mean, whatever. I don't know. Wild, right? I guess so. It's not. It's not to you? <laughs> Time is a weird thing for me. Why? Um, I don't, I, I don't know. Like, is I'm, this too heavy of a conversation right now? No, no. I'd like to go heavy. <laughs> I don't right. want to go cool. boring shit today. Let's is do that it. okay? I'm going to do whatever we want. I just don't feel like We're talking living our own about world. dumb shit. Yeah. God. But for me, and I don't know if there's something wrong with me, I have met a couple people like this, but like concepts of time where I'm like, when did that happen? You will know years where you'd be like, oh, that was like probably 95, 96 or something like that. Or you'll be like, dude, that was like 2002 that I was blah, blah, blah. My, when things happen, I have like, it kind of just goes into the abyss of the past. Um, I don't remember stories as vividly as you do. I, he, like, I can't recall, like, and I don't know if it was different childhood, different memories, like, that I didn't have, like, such amazing, super happy memories, right? To remember? You didn't? No, but I, when people tell me, like, stories that are really detailed from, like, middle school, or even high school, I'm like, gosh, that's crazy. I don't, I just don't remember things in that way. Are right. you weird or am I weird? Um, I, I don't think either. And, I, and I'll tell you why. Like, I, I think it's also what you choose to remember and why, right? So I, I'm, I'm, I've been dealing with somebody um, in this, like, I, we're, we're in a fucking lawsuit. We've talked about this before, okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and look, these movies get sued all the time and all this shit, like just frivolous bullshit that happens all the time. There's a guy, uh, one of the lawyers, um, you can tell he had an awful like high school experience and like growing up, like something right. fucked up must have happened to him. Okay. And I think when that happens, people hold on to memories and anger a lot longer than, than other people for certain things, right? Okay. I... I I think 
high school and middle school in particular really stay with people for a very, very long time. And, and it could be either way, right? So for you, you don't care because nothing really happened, right? I mean, stuff happened, but, but nothing like traumatic or bad. Oh no, or, no, no, yeah. nothing traumatic or bad. I yeah. just was like, kind of had my group of friends. I probably, you know, smoked a little bit too much weed and drank and stuff like that. Yeah, but, but nothing, nothing crazy. You know what I'm saying? No, like, no, nothing yeah. crazy. Nothing that would be like, why don't I have like, like you got beat up at a party or something like that. So I like I I, I, I meet people like that a lot where you like talk I wasn't to them. Bullied. Yeah, I, so. I, you meet people like that who've been bullied. You can tell they were bullied and they're holding on to this sticks in their thing mind forever. Right. Yeah. Then I've met people who high school and you know, high school in particular was their best time in their life. And now for whatever reason, it's gone downhill. Sure. You know, you've met people, you know, people like that as well. Yeah. Where high school was their fucking pinnacle. And then, you know, Shit, either college was shitty or they didn't go to college or their life is shitty or whatever. And they're still holding on to high school. Mm-hmm. So with that, with people like that, with that, that I've met, it seems to me like their favorites, memories and songs and dates are all somehow related to that era. Yeah. So it's kind of based on that. Yeah. 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 Um, for me personally, I had a great childhood. Um, me too. I was like I, I, like I was popular in high school and I enjoyed high school and all that shit. But it, I, I didn't ever look at high school as this would be the best my life would ever be. So I don't really talk to anybody from high school that much. I don't really care about it but anymore. But you do feel that way about college. Um, no, no, no. I don't. Like, You've said before college was well, your best no, time. Well, no, but I'll, I'll tell you why. So then I, I went to college, right? And it was my best time. And... Yes, life-wise, where you don't have a care in the world or whatever, Mm -hmm. but it was because of that. Right. Because you don't have a care in the world, not because I enjoyed taking tests or going to chemistry classes or anything like that. It's it's simply because it was a time where I didn't, mentally, I was free of any worries about shit, really. Right. Um, Then afterwards, you know, you get out of life, but still, I don't look at it even like today. In day-to-day life, I don't look at it as like, oh man, college was the best time of my life and I'll never be able to eclipse that. I don't. Because you take this this last year, I mean, doing the sports show and all that other stuff, like I got to fucking do things that I've never gotten to do in my entire life where I was just right. like, holy shit, this is incredible. So I've never, time-wise, I, I still feel like you can achieve the best and things that you've never done before. Like, so I, I, I look at time differently where it's, it's more valuable to me in my life now. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, spe- you know, being able to spend time with you or kids or, you know, things like that. So I value time more, but with things happening in my life, I like the stories and shit like that, they're usually triggered by something else. Like I feel that like I've had a pretty crazy life. Mm-hmm. Like all these stories and shit that I tell, like I'll remember later after talking about it, then I'll be like, oh, fuck. Well, something else happened in that party with so-and-so or so-and-so, you know? Right. Like I've told these stories about like meeting Julie Roberts or Tom Hanks or like fucking Elton John singing Rocket Man at a party. Like right. things like that where I'm like, oh, man, but I still forgot about that one time and this other time and this other time. Certain things trigger other things, but I've also been lucky enough to have a bunch of crazy shit happen that continues to happen where i'm like oh man you know that fucking castle and shit like that yeah that's true like so it keeps going they're all all of it's different and it's you know look there's a story from the super bowl weekend that you and i can never tell no and but gosh it's a good one <laughs> and it continues to be a inside joke <laughs> if you looked at our text message we could be liable but <laughs> Um, do you feel like sh- life is long or short? Like, do you think that it's flown by or are you no. like, dang, it's been a long, like no. I, I definitely, when people are like, life is short, I'm like, it's also long. So I, I, m- me personally, I feel it's long and it depends on what well, I think it, it, here's what it depends on to me of what you're doing at that time and what your job is or what you're waiting for. Right. 
So I felt the longest, longest time in my life, I felt was the 20, my, my 20s, right? I felt like that went on for 30 years because you, like, I, I just moved to Los Angeles at that point and um, you audition for shit because I wasn't producing or, or, or making any of the, my own, I know my company wasn't open or anything in my 20s, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you go to these auditions and then you wait. Everything, you hurry up and wait and wait and wait and wait. Every day felt like it was a week. Every, you know, and I was just right. like, oh my God. Right. And it, all of those years felt like they were never ending when it was just like, I felt, it felt like Groundhog's Day, truly. Yeah. And so that, that made me look at life and be like, all right, this is long. And then as life got shorter, when you're super busy with all kinds of crazy shit, like the product, my production company starting getting married, having children, all that stuff, time becomes shorter, but you're doing more things. And you're not, I like, I, I, at this point in my life, I'm not waiting for, I don't have to wait for anything. I don't have to wait for that phone call. I don't have to wait for so-and-so to do their job or whatever. I can physically make it happen every day. Mm -hmm. So I I feel like life is going accordingly now, whereas it used to feel long. How about you? Um, life feels long in some ways and short in others, like with the kids. It's short, right? right? You never have enough time. But I think I I have always thought of life as long to kind of make myself feel better about certain things. So like either things that didn't happen, you know, parts you didn't get, relationships, whatever. When you're low, feeling low, it feels a lot better to be like, life is long. You know, like right. you will look back on this and be like, oh. At one time. Right. So it just kind of helped me get through certain things to to realize how much time you have, how many seasons you do have in your life over and over, you know? Yeah. Things that change, evolve, change, go back like they're good, bad. Nothing's nothing's ever really good for a long time and nothing's really bad for a long time. So I just sort of started thinking of life in that way. And um, maybe that's why it kind of is a blur I where it's just it. like, this isn't good. Everything that happens, even when it's so good in my mind, I still sort of know it's not going to last this way. <laughs> right. Is that bad or good? I don't know. But I, I feel that same way when you're low, when you're feeling bad. Right. So it's a way of kind of keeping things even. And as you know, with me, I don't get like super excited about stuff did you, like just lady, did you give a lady gaga face uh, 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 yeah, yeah yeah i did um but i don't get super excited about stuff you're always like this is cool right yeah and i'm like yeah it's awesome it is but there's always part of me that's like for how long you know or or how how long is it gonna be great before it's stressful or how long is it gonna you know like i just Thinking of life like a roller coaster, you don't ever get really, really low and you don't ever get super high. And it just sort of helps keep I, I even look, keel. I look at the average expectancy for a male, right, in, in the United States. And I believe it's 76 is what mm-hmm. it is. So I, I look at it like, all right, still got like 30 whatever years to go and that shit. And, you know, and, and it's just like. In the grand scheme of things, what is that? Double my life, essentially. So I'm like, yeah, all right, I get a while. So I, I feel, I feel like it's it's fine unless something fucked up happens to me. But um, right. but then I won't know anyway. So who cares? Sure. But I yeah, I think that time for me, I appreciate it, and I know it's short. Like I I've always understood that life is short. Right. Uh, there was a bunch of weird deaths, um, for me personally growing up, like kids at school. You were just like, holy shit, at a young age where you were like, man, all right, life is really short. Um, like some, w- w- somebody was supposed to meet us at the movies one night in, in uh, eighth grade, b- crashing a telephone pole, you know, maybe like f- five blocks away or whatever it was, died. And you were like, somebody ran into the theater and told us. And we were, it was the, I forget what movie, we, we snuck in to see the doors or something like that. I forget what it was. And then I, I was like, oh man, fuck. Things can be taken away from you pretty quickly. And that's true. So I've always tried to live life like it's short and then we'll see what happens. 
Maybe in the long run, that probably wasn't the best decision, but we'll find out, brother. You know? Yeah. So we'll see. But that's my recipe for just being chill. Yeah, you are mad chill. Yeah, because it's not going to last. I see. None I, of it's going to last. I am not chill because of how much I value time. So yes. anything that eats up my time or sucks away at time, I want those people to die. And I don't like watching you try like um, me and my some members of my family and stuff like to walk around like a town. Right. Seeing you like try and do that. Like it's it's hard for you. Anything that feels like not a waste, but just kind of where you can. What is it? Is that a true statement or is, am, I, am I wrong? No, here's where that statement comes from. Because <laughs> I've, I've thought a lot about this. Where I was, You know, I'll just be able to be like, oh, cute. And we're walking around, we're hanging out. And you're like, I got to, you're like, I got to get to work. Like, this is crazy. We can't walk I'll t- around. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll, yeah, I'll tell you why. There, <laughs> everybody I've met who is completely kidding. bliss and at peace. Like, we're just not a care in the world. Time doesn't matter to them. Mm-hmm super fucking rich and i want to i want to get to that place so that way i can walk around a town Mm -hmm. and not give a fuck i i would love to get to a place my dream would be to get to a place where i don't have a phone right i don't want to like i don't care about bill murray is the dream yes and so i i I'm great at social media. I know that. Like, I lo- and I like making sketches and doing all the shit. And like, if you follow my Instagram, it's fucking insane at, at all times. For real. Like, and, but, but if, if somebody said, hey, Ross, you got you to give it all up tomorrow. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or whatever. Like, I would be f- fucking totally fine with that. Right. But you would have to be so rich that you don't care about anything. And it's like, all right, then time. I think if you eliminated all that shit from your life, you know, the, the, the phone and everything else and didn't really care, then time is like, all right, great. I, doesn't, I can walk through a town today and enjoy my life. I could stop in a bar at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And but then, here's this. Then that time isn't as relaxing or valuable because there, it wasn't bookended with hard work. So for me, I like a real, I like to have like work all week and then have like a relaxing day or night, like Friday after a work day. That's my favorite because it's like you worked, you did something. Sure. Now that time that you have, it's a earned, right? Right. You earned relax, relaxation and you know, it's, it's. Means it means more. See, for me, I, there there me. hasn't been a, a weekend where I haven't gotten a phone call from a lawyer it or have an to email be a or it's a, just a even if it's just an hour of no, like I know I, like, after work or whatever it may be. Even if it's just an hour of like I worked hard, I did that. The problem with what we do is you never get to the end of it, so you never get the end of a work week. It's always just. An hour, and then you probably have to get back to work when you get home, right? <laughs> so you can't ever. I find a way, you, but you can't ever. You know shut me though. Down. I, well, here's the thing: you know me. You know there would there would be nothing more in this world that I would love than to fucking roll out to the beach with a fat cooler full of like. I mean, but that's where I. That's where we're different because I don't like that kind of. <laughs> relaxation where I, I do even when we go to like we go to New York that's my favorite place to go and like vacation right go to New York I want to work a little bit there sure so I feel like a I'm meant to be there yeah, yeah and then when you do go out again it's earned like I like to earn relaxation I, I and I like, don't like to just sit and relax for a long period I'm of time. I'm one of the hardest working dudes there is. And I, I, can sit, I can sit there with a fucking cooler on the beach of sure. Zima mixed with Wilmington Brew right. Brewery and right. then mixed with Not Your Father's Root Beer. Right. Maybe some edibles and sure. then call it a day. Jeez. Like a fucking day. 
<laughs> Maybe some acid. Like, yeah. A couple of mushrooms. Yep. A button of peyote. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I am good, right? It's not like. Have you thought about doing does, DMT? It does sound like it takes a lot of <laughs> chemicals for you to relax. Not that. I'm, but no, I could, I could um, put one of those huge yeah. umbrellas out there. And that's just me. I could just go out, DMT, <laughs> right on the beach. But, uh, hey. So little something about me. And that's weird. I know it's weird. But if I have enough drugs in me, I can re not, not that harder. I than just mean like, dude, I don't want to think about shit. I don't want to think about anything. Look, I get it. I get it. I just like uh, I'm one of those people where you ever see those people on the beach where they have an umbrella and they're sitting there all fucking day where you're just like, man, yeah, that's how are you there all day? To me, that's a nightmare. No, not at all. To me, that's a nightmare. Not at all. I need to need (laughs) growing up. So my uncle was a pretty powerful dude. He was uh, CEO of Safeway. Right. And then moved over to Woolworths and uh Passed away early from a heart attack. Is stress probably. Sure, it's my guess. But um, uh, either way, when I we used to go to uh, vacation my my grandparents' house, which uh, eventually became mine in New Jersey and yeah. on LBI for a week, and for a week every single day, he would take this yellow umbrella, Mm-mm. put out a full blanket. And books, just read books and sit there from like 9 a.m. till fucking 6 p.m. And I've never seen a fucking guy relaxed more in his life than that. But and, and he, had not, awful. he had nothing. No awful. cell phones, no nothing. Mm-mm, 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 Pure mm-mm. relaxation. Uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah. No. Yep. No, sir, no how. Um, <laughs> I could go. So let me ask you this. I could do maybe what? When we were in the Bahamas then, like for what was it? Four days? Like, could you relax or whatever? I could relax a little bit, but... Because I was really relaxed. (laughs) It was really relaxing. It's almost like, yeah, it was relaxing, but... I had no phone because the phone, my cell phones didn't work. Didn't work. So I I had no phone. My problem is I can't day drink anymore. So it's like, Uh, it's hard, dude. I had some, some little nibbers, but... Makes you tired, but um, makes, I think there's a t- certain, huh? <laughs> makes you tired, brother. Yeah, and that's just something about me, you know. <laughs> something weird about me. Some pills and some rum, and I just get tired because uh, I'm so weird. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. There were, for certain amounts of time. So, like, I guess I wanted to relax out there, get some sun you know, hang out for a little bit sure, and then come in, eat some food, you know, at one of those places by the pool, Right. then come in. Like I liked short, I don't, it's hard to explain. I don't want to just. No, I I get it. Chill on the beach for hours and hours. My favorite thing is like going to dinner, getting ready for dinner, relaxing at a meal. Right. So I could do that longer than you can. Yes, you, like d- I can, you like, definitely can. Like I can sit at a nice restaurant, bottles of wine, appetizers, like talking. I get that, full and I, I just, I get full and, and get, I want to leave. And then you want to leave. I'm tired because I'm like, all right, I just ate a, a For sure. A maybe brick. we shouldn't like eat as much. Maybe we should do like real little tasting it's, menus. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. What are you, you're That's down to like four restaurants then at that point. Whatever. That would be a dream. I've, I've only been to one that I've enjoyed like that too, actually. One was in L.A. in Venice, and then one was uh, Dram and Morsel here. Right. Where you could have little... What's the one in Venice? Bites of whatever. We went there. Um, oh, okay. Somebody... Did someone suggest it to us and we went? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. I think it was called like Tapas or something like that. Um, oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Did our friend work there? Yes. Okay. Uh, and when we walked in, we are like, oh, hey. Oh, hey, yeah. Um, so... Yeah. Like that, where I was like, all right, cool. But you're kind of That's Mediterranean dream. diet style where it's just like, oh, here's three mm-hmm. olives. Here's two crackers. I love it. Here's, and it, you just keep but going and going and going. the whole time. Yeah. Love, love, love. And there was so a, that's no, more there was a, of a... There was a place in uh, Hermosa Beach, too, on the pier that, that I really liked as well. Right. Um, but so they're that's rare. My, they're hard to find. My jam. Yeah. And then 
You like uh, a beach day drinking situation oh, and yeah. then a nap. So I yeah. I don't love a, a, a nap. Love a good nap. You know what I mean? After drinking. Um, I like to kind of keep it chill and then go drink harder at night. But um, I don't know. That's just. So what are you going to do if, if uh, let's say we reach that point. Okay. Right. Because we, we've had this discussion over the last three days more than more than we have in the past with the way things are going. It's like drinking bros keeps getting bigger. The show keeps getting bigger and all right, this shit. Right. I would never s- stop doing these shows. So for the audience out there, if you're like, oh, fuck. oh no, we're going to still do this forever. We'll yeah. just have people, more people helping more people wor- working. But um, so I, w- I would still do this. Mm-hmm. But uh, like I said, because I can't, I need to earn my relaxation. So I'd still need to do a little something, whatever gotcha. it is. Gotcha. No, I could really fucking relax. You could really shut it all down and say goodbye. That razor phone, give me a burner and we'll call it. You would love it. Yeah. So what are you asking me? What I would do if what? If you reach that point, like, would you be okay with it? Or would you find something else? I'm like, oh, fuck, I got to do this. Yeah, I would think I would always need to be doing something. So like working out and or like getting a trainer and all that stuff, that wouldn't be good enough for you. Um, no, I, f- I find that, um, life is sort of like, again, relaxation or just life in general is meaningless without some kind of purpose. Okay. So again, like when we go to New York, like it is fun to just go, but I like it even more when i I go with a purpose when we have an interview, when we have something that um, makes it all earned. Got it. Got it. And so just relaxing, just to relax, like, I don't know. Because I, 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 I always want to be doing something. Again, this show. No, I get it. If life works out, this show would be the thing that we do. You know, at the very least, we'd go two times a week or something. But uh, for as long as we can do it, this would be the perfect thing to do, right? Gotcha, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I still and- look at, so I, I look back at this last season of doing the sports show, and I don't mean to, to bring it back to this again, but this was the first year we, we had done it. And, yeah. you know, the, the sponsors and stuff were paying for tickets and all that other shit. So we got to go to the best events every, what, two yeah. weeks? on the planet, do live shows, meet all the listeners. And, and it was amazing. And I, and I was like, fuck man. That like, if you had the, the means to do that all the time, just pick the best game or the best event mm-hmm. fights, whatever mm-hmm. is going on, on the planet mm-hmm. and just go, holy shit. That's amazing. So, it is amazing. But the people that I find that are older that, um, seem younger to me or, don't seem as old as they are, are still sort of working in some capacity. So they've maybe cut back, uh-huh. um, but they're still working. It's when you completely stop working um, that you find meaning, that trying to find meaning in your life um, gets hard and you maybe get more dramatic about stuff or you you need to add some kind of thing to your life right whereas if you're working or if you have that that's still kind of in your life you know you aren't a busybody in your neighborhood you don't like make drama with your husband right. or with your friends or whatever um so from what i've seen with the people again like parents or older people that work um it just seems to be, it keeps you sharp. It keeps you in it. You're still in the game. Sure. You're still hanging out like, you know, I don't know. You May- still have your friends. You still have work. You still have a purpose in life. And it gets you up and it gets you out. And uh, other things don't really bother you as much. Man, maybe I'd open up like a baby spoon business. Baby spoon? Yeah. Just yeah, and then you spoons. do that kind of stuff, or you write some book <laughs> about, you know, baby spoons, or you get super in shape to where it's like, ah, oh, get a job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you're an older gal that's yeah. like really super in shape, or you're just like super Oof. in shape to where Oof. you're like, that's awesome. 
Yeah. And that is awesome. But it's not what I want for my life, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> when I get older, I want to still work a little bit and then I want to eat. Yeah. Eat good meals uh, with good friends and family. And that would be a fucking dream. Sure. No, it would be awesome. We'll see if that happens or not. We'll see if that happens. Could we still do the show till the end? I think so. Yeah. Do you ever think about that? Like, will, do you think Rogan or, or Mark Marin will stop? I don't think so. And again, it keeps them even younger than they. I mean, they're 50s. Yes. Yes. You they know, are. Yeah. and they don't seem that way. They're hanging out with and fully on the level with 30 year olds. Yeah. You know, and not yeah. in a way of like that old timer, just straight up a peer, you know? Yeah. Um, so, and, and I think that's how you do it. I think that wasting away in your own, your own Filth. thoughts and your own drama, I think that just, and not being connected to the world in any way, not reading, not whatever. Yeah. I think it makes you older than you are. Yeah. And I think so too. Um, when I, when I'm talking about checking out though, I'm, ch- I'm talking about like, I don't want to email people or talk to them, you know, just, or you can call me, you know, you can, you can just pick up the phone and call me. I'm a big calling guy. Are you? Yeah. And people are always surprised. They're like, Oh fuck. I can't believe you called. And I was like, yeah, I, I'm not. Oh, I do call too. I, I call everyone. I, I like calling too. Yeah. And I have a few friends that are into talking. And I know they're the ones that I call. So there's like two people that are like, yes, glad you called. I'm like a caller. You're yeah, like, yeah. yeah. I, call, I call people all the time. Just um, I'm like, and then hey, there's I'd some like that you, you know, they won't answer and that's fine. They don't ever want to talk on the phone. They'll right. only text or see you in person. That's fine. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> I see you. Okay. I never know where the show is going every day, which is why I like it. <laughs> I do. I just uh, think it's fun. sometimes it's weird. sometimes it's good to just talk about life. Just about whatever. Yeah, like I think that sometimes, I mean, I I tune into podcasts sometimes to just relate in some way. Whatever it is, even if they're talking about just bullshit. Sure. I just want to like hear somebody kind of going through things that I've thought about before. Whatever. Yeah, I, I do too. I, you know, I know Rogan takes a lot of heat for this, but like, uh, you know, with his DMT, have you ever tried DMT and all that <laughs> other stuff? Like, I've had, I've had a lot of people come up to me and ask me that of like, hey, I've actually thought about it and I don't want to say it to people, you know? And I'm to do it? Y- y- yeah, yeah. So um, th- they've come up to me and said it of like, hey, man, I was listening to your show or Rogan's or whatever. And I was just like, I've thought about doing it. You know, that's right. that type of shit. And I was like, I get it, man. Uh, it, it was a conversation two days ago. I had with somebody and I just said, um, I was like, yeah, I feel like both terabytes are full up here and I just need to clear off one of them and then I soldier think, on. Yeah, I think DMT is the thing, right? I think so. I think so. We'll see. Or ayahuasca. Yeah. Got in a Peru. I need I a good those shaman are the too. clean slate drugs where. I need a good shaman. Sure. You know. Who doesn't? <laughs> That'll bring Yellow us to pages. the revolutionary figure of the day, Jables. Um, we're gonna look. We're gonna go. Uh, we're gonna go out to Aaron Burr on this one. Um, he was he was big time, Jabes. He was big time. He was uh, you know third vice president of the United States, and I think that. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Just on President's Day, you know, really go sure. for it. <laughs> Was he a president or vice president, James? You tell me right now. Um, president, vice. Hmm? Vice president? Yeah, yeah, he was. I thought he was a real president. Didn't know. Um. Didn't know anything about it. There's some of these presidents I don't know. I really don't. That's cool. Do you, did you have Me that neither. thing growing up where you what? had to name them all in order? Like, Maybe. It was, no, I got skipped on that. Again. We, we didn't have that. that I don't song know. We or whatever have. it was. I don't remember anything from. <laughs> we, we just were talking about this for an hour. <laughs> I don't remember. 
Well, look, he shot his political rival, Alexander Hamilton, in a famous duel in 1804. I love that. So that was his last full single term as vice president. I, and I'm, I'm assuming that's what happened in the play Hamilton. That's uh, probably how it ended. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's right. Gosh, still, I don't have a desire, I know. Should I, should I want to see Hamilton? I, I'm, I'm with you in that camp, by the way. No, I'm I have sure, none, though, but I'm not saying it's no not amazing. No desire to see it. I'm sure it is, right? Yeah. And I believe it. And everyone that says, believe the hype, it's awesome, it's awesome. Sure. I believe you. Yeah. I still just don't. I'd rather go see Stomp. <laughs> Stomp seems fun, huh? With the brushes, the, the brooms and all the trash cans and stuff. I like that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's funny, man. As you go through like his Wikipedia and shit of like Hamilton, it's fucking never ending. Where you're just like, was it because of that, that play? I have, no, I have no interest in seeing it. And I sat uh, on the flight back. Uh, no, I'm sorry. The flight out to Kansas City. I sat next to a, an older gentleman, probably about 68, 60, 69, maybe. Oh, yeah. The golden year. And he was tan as fuck. And we were going to Kansas City. And I was like, oh, man. And he goes, he looks out the window. It was snowing. And it was like a blizzard or whatever. And he goes, uh, would you look at this fucking weather? And he goes, uh, man, I, I live in it. You know? And I, he goes, I was just in Puerto Rico yesterday, uh, is what he said. And right. I was like, oh. Shit, that's amazing. And I was like, uh, congratulations. I was like, well, who'd you go to Puerto Rico with? And he goes, well, I didn't know what to say. Uh, yeah, that probably wasn't the thing. But <laughs> so I go, who did you go with? And he goes, oh, my wife. And I looked around. There was a dude sitting next to him. And I was like, where's your wife at? She was stuck. Like, and oh, okay. Left separated on yeah. some other seat or whatever. And mm-hmm. I was like, oh, shit, man. I would have switched. I don't, yeah. I don't give a shit. And he's like, no, nah, she's in a middle seat. And I was like, oh, well. Definitely want to switch on that one. Sure. So you probably probably pegged that one right when you looked at the big guy, obviously. But he goes, we just uh, we just got back from Hamilton in Puerto Rico, and oh, it right. was amazing. And I was like, oh shit! And I was like, how is it? Like I thought he stopped doing it. And he goes, uh, he goes, no, no, no. He goes, we really want. And this was like a 68, 69 year old white man, sure, who. By all appearances, had you know a normal job at like a paper company or something, you know. Yeah. And it was his dream. He goes, "That was me and my wife's dream was to see Hamilton with the original cast and Lin Emanuel Miranda." Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Oh, okay. Well, what what happened? How did that shake out? You know, did you, was he was he doing it? Because I thought he stopped doing it." And he goes, "Yeah, he was doing, I guess, a series of shows in Puerto, in Puerto Rico, Rico yeah. for to raise money mm-hmm. for, uh, you know." the hurricanes or whatever it was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and I was like, Oh fuck. And he goes, yeah, he goes, I, I couldn't believe it when I just popped open my computer and got on Ticketmaster, whatever the site was and entered in the thing. And he goes, we got two tickets like immediately. I was like, well, you know, you did have to fly to Puerto, Puerto Rico. Rico to do that and right. get a hotel and all of that stuff. And he looks at me and he goes, it was totally worth it. It was the best time in my entire life. And I was like, Holy I shit. That. So maybe, I, I don't know, maybe there is something to it. I've never seen a, a dude happier than him <sighs> about seeing Hamilton. I just, you wow. know. Yeah. Good on him. Sure. Because, I mean, let's say you flew down to Puerto Rico and the play was a piece of shit. I would imagine he wouldn't have lied to me on that flight back. No, he'd be said, like, don't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lynn, Lynn Manuel Miranda really tricked us with that what one. What a bust. Yeah. Yeah, you're like. Wow, it's the only person in history that's ever said Hamilton's not good. Um, but he had the time like, of his life, yeah, that guy. Listen. So maybe there is something to it. I have just never been interested. Like, it didn't, nothing. Not once. D- d- like, throughout that whole hype of that shit where I was like, oh, man, mm-hmm. Hamilton. All my friends who have seen it were just like, dude, it's the greatest. Yeah, I mean, they were yeah. like DiCaprio, Wolf of Wall Street style with it of like, it's fucking amazing sure. with a microphone. Oh, 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 it was yeah. amazing. And I was like, Jesus Christ. All right, man. So it's it's a rapping, you know, Musical. guy who got shot in a duel. Like, all right, cool, I guess. Yeah. So maybe we're the, we're the assholes, shapes. Probably. Usually we are. Yeah. You know, I, I want to go f- see fish at Jazz Fest. Judgy fucks. And, and maybe they look either. at me like, hey, 
fuck you, you idiot. I, do I wanted to see something about our American history. I wanted to see presidents and shit rap on right. Broadway. Right. You can go take your blown up cheeseburgers to, you know, bouncing all around and get the fuck out of here, Holmes. Maybe that's what they were thinking. Cheeseburger in paradise. Not even close to fish, but um what what is the cheeseburger? Uh, What's that's, the cheeseburger? That is definitely Jimmy Buffet. Yeah, but why would you say why'd you say it? They do weird shit at concerts, and one of the shows that I was at, they blew up like these. Uh, oh, okay. Like five hundred so little Jimmy blow Buffett. up cheeseburgers, and they were beach balls, and they were just out. So does Buffett. And they play the song called "Bouncing Around the Room," and all these fucking cheeseburgers were out everywhere. Yeah. And, and I like you know. Same. Now that I'm saying it out loud, <laughs> me making fun of these fucking people for wanting to see Hamilton in Puerto Seems like Rico. A nightmare. I wouldn't I, want to do either. No, I'm an asshole, and I apologize. I, I apologize for that. I'd see Primus, maybe. <laughs> All base. <laughs> Primus, you remember? Why would Primus come to your mind right now? Because I always put them together in like bands that would make me want to fucking kill myself <laughs> if I had to see. Primus is one of them. Bow, bow, bow. Fish is another because I just don't love a jam band. Right. <laughs> so I kind of put them in the same sort of category. Yeah. I don't know. I, I, where I grew up in Georgia, that was like the jam banish time mm-hmm. in, in, mm-hmm. in like states because mm-hmm. like Black Crows were big and Almond Brothers were mm-hmm. always playing. And yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I would see either one of those. Widespread panic. Mm. always playing mm. and even now when i see somebody's like oh man they're at a widespread show there's part of me that's like oh fuck i missed it just because they were from georgia so we saw them all the time right um rem's not one of them you know what jam no, no. they were there from they were like athens and i was just like Oof. i would see them gross no desire man on the moon no Ew. If he didn't give, <laughs> if he didn't give a speech, a political speech after every song he did, no. then maybe. But now, now he can give fucked to me. Yeah, Kill weird, it. right? Yeah, but a jam band I can get down on. And again, oh, I know. And again, maybe going to Puerto Rico isn't that crazy. All right, I flew to Madison Square Garden one year to see Fish on New Year's. So oh. maybe, maybe God. I'm the fucking asshole. You are. Yeah, probably. Problem, it, we just got to the bottom of it. After all of this. After all this time, 326 it? episodes. <laughs> finally, he's an asshole. Who knew? Let's go. Uh, anybody out there? Who has any Primus mem- memorabilia? Send it to P.O. Box 3793, Wilmington, North oh. Carolina, 28406. I'll get it framed and put it on Jesse's set. Oh Primus. Primus. You love a good bass. Oh, just all bass. Heavy, heavy bass. That's what you bitched about at the uh, uh What was it? Grammys. The Grammys? Yeah. Yeah, when uh, Post they were Malone like, whoa, was playing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Flea, is, his bass is way too high. He had his bass up to like... <laughs> He was, like I said, he was the only one that showed up to sound check. <laughs> Everyone else was super low and all you could hear was a bow, 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 which is always such a um, soothing sound, which is why I understand Primus. When you do it, Jesse, it's... It really is soothing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds really, really soothing. Yeah. Bow, 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 bow. <laughs> Why don't you play us out of here uh, with some Primus? With some no, some mouth oh. bass. Just give me. A, so I'm Ross Patterson. It's hard to make it this not the re- sound the revolution. Seinfeld-y. <laughs> Wait, that's what I want. I want you want, want Seinfeld? I want Seinfeld to play us out. Okay. I'm Ross Patterson. This is the Revolution. That's Jesse Wiseman, aka the Jable. She's gonna lead us out with some mouth bass from Seinfeld. <laughs> Good night. Bow, ba down, bow, 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 bow. <laughs> It sounds nothing like that song. <laughs> yeah. No, Seinfeld is bow, ba down, bow, bow. No. Yeah, it is. No, nowhere near it. I'll play it. Yeah. <laughs> Put it right after this. I will. Right. Bow, ba down, bow, bow.
Wait. Is anybody still bam, listening at this point? No, they turned off. <laughs> so we can say whatever we want. Bam, ba down, bam, bam. That's it. <laughs> All right, we're going to play that that right now on the audio show because we'll get flagged on YouTube for the other video show. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night.